Hi, my name is Stephen Nipping, and I'm a senior effects TD at Industrial Light and Magic in San Francisco. I also run Applied Houdini, which is the cool video tutorial series that you can learn how to do visual effects for contests like this. I'm one of the guest judges on this, and um, maybe you saw Urban's video already. It's quite comprehensive. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what he said already, but I am going to kind of bring my own take to this. So as you no doubt are aware, we've got two characters squaring off, magicking each other, affecting each other, and there you go. So I think the main thing I want to talk about is not falling into the trap of just kind of doing generic or rote effects that you've seen before and maybe you feel like are expected. You know, I've seen a lot of demo reels and I'm sure you've seen a lot of movies that have a lot of like, and then this guy shoots an energy beam at that guy and then he's like, no, the energy beam hit me. That's bad news for him. You know, I think that what you want to try to do here is to find the story. You want to find why are these two characters at odds? Obviously, there is no right answer. So that's part of the fun that we get to have with this challenge. Um, keeping in mind that that uh, competition needs to be expressed visually because that's all we got. Um, so it's not going to be good enough that, you know, this guy stole his lunch money when he was a kid. Now he's back for revenge. You know, it's got to be something that makes sense in the 28 seconds we have here visually. So off the top of my head, and this is by no means like something that you have to do or I'm secretly signaling for you to do it and I'm only going to vote for you if you do. But as, a, as an example, what if this was an icy landscape, this is a ice monster, this is like a sheet of ice on an ice lake, maybe the sheet is like a foot thick or something, here he comes, he breaks through. So right off the bat, we're like, a, the, the default approach to this would be this guy is breaking through dirt, and so there's a bunch of dirt comes up, and you got a few big chunks and lots of smaller chunks, and then there's like a layer of smoke or whatever and it's like that's fine but i've obviously seen it before probably everybody else is doing that it's it'll be nice and, and good skill to have and to show off in general because certainly plenty of movies need that is that going to win you this competition though maybe not maybe not again when everybody else is doing it so that might be interesting now it's ice and it's and there's you know water from below the ice being thrown up. What is this? This could be an ice breath that's kind of extinguishing this guy. Like this is like a fire guy from Fire Planet, you know? So he's getting cooled off and you can see that color changing. So now we have a story being told visually. And it's not just, I'm angry. And there's like flecks of spit coming out. That's what would normally happen, but it, it might be more interesting uh, to do it the other way. Again, here we have like, oh, what do we expect here? We expect a shield effect. It's not that you can't do a shield effect, but maybe that shield effect should be in terms of the relationship to each other. If this is fire guy, hypothetically speaking, we might have a, a fiery disc of some kind, uh, or maybe he's just sh literally just shooting a gout of flame out of his hand. But then I might see some of this ice is melting, Maybe because of that, it's weakening his ice hook. Like maybe he's not entirely ice. Maybe he's mostly just regular monster, but he has like regenerating ice hook hands. So boom, it shatters. And that's why he like backs away a little bit because now the thing he was holding back broke. So the ice shattered. And then maybe it's just a stub of an arm here, but now the like ice arm is like regenerating or something. Um, we're just getting all this for free because we started from an interesting premise. We didn't try to shoehorn like this is the effect I want to do into it. We started from uh, this is an ice guy and this is a fire guy. And what would happen? What would happen? And then letting that dictate what happens. In the normal world, this guy hits the ground. What do we get from that? A dust kick, meaning we get a puff of dust. 
A dust kick is an important skill. You should be able to do that. It's going to come up a lot in the industry. However, is that interesting right now in this competition? Or would it be more interesting that this guy's fire, he touches the ground, steam comes up. Maybe the, the ice cracks the way an ice cube cracks when it gets warmer. Now that tells the story of this guy's in danger. He's a fire dude, right? Maybe now that his whole body contacted the ground, uh, it weakened the ice here. What happens when the ice breaks and he falls in? It gets extinguished like a match. So it's stuff like that. A dust kick is a dust kick, but a, a cracking ice like an ice cube effect is, and that's not like a major effect, that's like a secondary effect, but it's like maybe more interesting overall. So, and, it, and it goes on like that. Um, all these things are left to our imagination, of course, and we can interpret them through the lens of, uh, of this story that we came up for them. These guys could be, forget fire and ice, this could be a, a being of pure light. This could be a, a being of shadow that has maybe real claws, like physical claws, but they kind of float around in this like, you know, remember the smoke monster kind of thing? Maybe all of these like hard, physical, scary bits are all real and hard, but everything else is black smoke or like a purplish smoke that kind of is kind of like a color wave almost of representing darkness. Uh, so this light is like piercing the, the smoke and is dissipating it or something. Uh, and that's because of the relationship of lightness and darkness and not just a yellow beam of energy that is impacting it and is setting sparks away. There's so many things you can do. And I would say overall, it doesn't even need to be elemental opposites. It doesn't have to be fire and ice or lightness and darkness. It could ultimately still just be a regular monster and a regular dude, but the visual language should still maybe tell that kind of story where you have, it's kind of like the Scarlet Witch. I probably should have had visual examples prepared, but sorry. If you think of the Scarlet Witch in the Avengers movies, like, all of her magic looks a certain way. It's this kind of mysteriously curly, red, like blood kind of red stuff um, that hopefully would contrast with the enemy's thing. Uh, I mean, I guess his could just be that he's just brute strength and he's not doing that much magic, but you probably will end up maybe doing something with his eyes or something with his mouth, but that's... But that's the thing, that's the trap again. We don't want to just, his eyes are glowing or he's just regular sp spittles are coming out. If it's just that, you have to know that you're going to be going up probably against other people that are doing that also. You're just going to get so much farther and it's going to be a much more interesting thing for our, for the viewer to be able to say, oh man, that's a, a cool that's a cool idea, or even just subtle, again, secondary things that would naturally come from whatever their visual thing is that shows that they are at odds. Sometimes we see this in animation where like the bad guy is much more angular. We already do kind of see that here. And the good guy is much more rounded and stuff. That could show up in the, the language of the magic itself as well. Maybe he has magical shield stuff that comes up sometimes like when he's doing this thing and his shield magic looks more sinister you know it's more angular it's like lots of triangles and sharp like squares and triangles and things and this guy's shield magic is much more you know circular and, and curvy and just something like that. that that's what we're trying to figure out this is an ancient evil this is a more modern guy this guy's made out of stones. This guy's made out of wires and electricity and zeros and ones. Just something that tells that story for us visually that is not just generic sparks, dirt, dust hits, stuff like that. That's at least what I'm interested in. Um, to, to conclude, you definitely don't need to do any of the specific examples that I gave, but just try to think about what's motivating these guys, how are they different, how are they different in a way that can be expressed visually and ultimately in a way that makes the effects be cool and are going to stand out. Because 
a well-executed effect is one thing, but a well-executed interesting effect is something else entirely, especially when you're trying to stand out in competition. Um, so that's it. That's it for me. Uh, good luck, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.